Hey guys, welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to continue our talk on creating variables. In previous videos, we talked about this iffy, immediately invoked function expression. And now I'm gonna be talking about basically a potential replacement for this iffy and something you're probably going to see in some newer JavaScript. Before we dive in though, I just wanted to ask you guys to check out the link in the description to see our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a bootcamp that's going to help you get a job in the industry and teach you everything you need to know about taking the concepts taught in tutorials and blogs and using those to solve real world problems. So rather than just always learning concept, you get to get some hands on experience and basically the entire bootcamp is designed about getting you a job in the industry. So if you want to learn what you need to know to succeed in the industry, check out Dev Mountain and make sure you let them know that I sent you their way and they'll give you 250 off their tuition. Sweet. All right. So with that, we're going to talk about immediately invoked function expressions and their replacement. Up until this point, we've used var to create variables. And in the previous video, I talked about let and const, and these are going to come up a lot in newer JavaScript. But first, let's talk about why we're using an iffy. If you guys remember, whenever we create a variable outside of a function, such as y, well, this is attached to the window object. So if I do a refresh and I type in window.y, you can see it gives us the value 10. What this means for us is that our variables that are created outside of any functions are accessible globally. This means we're basically polluting the global variables and adding new variables that people can easily replace. Definitely not something we want to do if we're building complex applications or using different frameworks or libraries that might already have variables with the same name as the ones we have. Because of that, the pattern of the iffy was created. And essentially we encapsulate all of our code in one giant function. So that means when we go down here and try to access age, well, age doesn't even exist because we go through here, we execute that function, we're outside of the function, we assign a value to y, and then we try to get the value of age. Well, we're outside of that function now, and it's already been executed, age no longer exists. So that is a good solution, and that is a great way to prevent global variables. But since I introduced you guys to let and const, there may actually be a better way. Once we deep dive into variable scoping, we'll definitely get into this some more. But for the basics, you need to understand that when we say let y equals 10, it works basically the same way. So we're creating a variable that is in the global scope. It's not going to be attached to the window object. So if we refresh and say window.y, it doesn't exist but it is still defined in the global scope. And here's a good stack overflow question if you wanna get all the details on that. But basically the conclusion is that both are still global, but vars is stored in window and lets are stored in a declarative environment. And he explains what all that is up here. But essentially what this means is that when we say let y equals 10, it's basically the same as doing var y equals 10. They're both accessible globally and it still introduces the same issues. But the benefit of using let is that we can use block scoping. So a block is any time we have a set of curly braces like so. Here is an example of a block. So similar to how this function has a block, well, we can create a block anywhere. And we'll often see those with if statements. When we get into those, you'll see a block like so, and you'll see them lots of other places. Block level scoping essentially restricts our variable to just this block. So now if we say let y equals 10, and if we do y, nothing. You know, it's, it's not there. Similar to the iffy. So in newer JavaScript content, you're probably just going to see these blocks and all of the variables are going to be created with let or const. The variables can still be used, but only inside of this block. So if we wanted to print the values, we could do it like so. Now when we do a refresh, we get 10 and 20. That basically sums up the use of let and const and how it can be beneficial to us. But you know, just for fun, why don't we just see what happens when we use var? So let's say var z equals 100. Well, var is not restricted by the bounds of this block. It always looks for a function block. And you can see we're not in a function. We're just in a normal block. So this is actually going to be just like creating it outside of this block. So that means we should be able to access it on the window object. And you can see window.z is 100. So using blocks and then continuing to use the var keyword completely defeats the purpose of blocks. <laughs> Typically what you'll see is maybe some older JavaScript applications will use the iffy and lots of vars. And then newer applications are going to use curly braces as a block using let and const. 
Either one you use, it's totally up to you, but I would probably recommend let and const as this is a more restrictive, I guess might be the word, way of creating variables in that you're only creating variables in the area that you need them. We haven't really talked about much scoping rules, but understand that we can nest blocks just like we can nest functions, and we'll get into that later on in the series. But this means when we create a variable in here, let's say let y equal six, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna console log y in here, and then we're gonna console log it out here too. And let's do a refresh. You can see we get the value six, and then we get the value 10. So we're creating this inside of a different block, which masks that other Y. So we're kind of going in the depths of variable scoping <laughs> and masking and all that stuff. We're gonna get into that in the future, but now the main thing I wanted to show you guys in this video is an alternative to the immediately invoked function expression, which is honestly very verbose and kind of makes me feel gross. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, please check out the sponsor because that would really help me out. And please check out the next video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.